All right, welcome back to another video. Today we're gonna to go over a project tutorial in Crystal language. So the other day I wanted to see if I could search for Crystal programming and my video would come up. Uh, so I did that and I got a lot of results about programming crystals like the rock, um, which is not in any way related to this. So I found out that's, that's an activity that some people are into. So if you're here for that, um, this is not the video for you, but for everybody else that's here to learn how to program Crystal, let's get started. So this project that we're working on will calculate an equation of a linear line using two points on the line. So it won't be too challenging. It'll use a lot of new syntax because this is really our first Crystal tutorial, but it's not all that complicated. The logic is very simple and I recorded a short video explaining the math behind it. So I'm gonna play that, and then we're gonna get back into the code. Hmm. Okay, so really fast, I'm gonna go over the math that goes into this video. If you're interested, I'll leave a link in the description on how you can learn more about linear equations if you are not super brushed up on it just from this video and maybe from prior math classes. I'm gonna start by just using the back of my calculator to draw two axes that will represent our x and y axis. So one, hopefully it doesn't smudge too much. I'm using a fountain pen just so it's dark and it appears on the camera. Okay, so now we have a really sloppy x and y axis, but it's fine because it's just a sketch. So then I'm gonna draw just a random line. So the only specification for this line is that it is straight, so it's linear. And then we're gonna pick two arbitrary points on this line. It does not matter where they are, they can be right next to each other, they can be 0 0.0001 units away. Actually, does that exceed the limits of crystals, floats? I'm not sure, anyway. So we choose these points and we can do the math on these points to figure out the equation for the whole line. We're gonna pick two points here. In this case, the points don't actually matter, we're just writing the literal equations. So we will choose x sub one, y sub one, my apologies for my poor handwriting, x sub two and y sub two. So these will represent coordinate one and then coordinate two, right? So that's pretty basic so far. Recall that slope intercept form of a linear equation is y equals mx plus b, where x is the input and y is the output m is the slope and b is the y-intercept where the line intercepts the y-axis. So let's do math to figure out what the m and the b values are because recall that the final equation would look something like this, for example, 3x plus 7 where x and y are left respectively. Let's get into this part. So if you don't know, slope is change in y over change in x. So we can just write m equals delta y, delta means change in, delta x, and that will be our slope. And then we know that change in y just means y final minus y initial. So we can just choose one of these to be the final and choose one to be the initial. So let's just say that coordinate two will be final. So I'm just gonna write an f and coordinate one will be initial. So I'm gonna write an i. What we can do is now write y sub two minus initial y sub one over, cause that's change in y and then we need change in x, x sub two minus x sub one. And this will give us the m value in our program. So now we need to solve for b and then we're pretty much done. So let's rearrange this equation and then we can solve for b. So I'm just gonna write it backwards here. And I didn't change anything yet. I just wrote it from the right side to the left rather than uh, left to right. And let's subtract mx from both sides. And that gets us b equals y minus mx. So we have a value for m and we do have values for y and x because these are two values for x and y, right? So we can choose which coordinate. Again, it does not matter as long as you use the same coordinates. So I'm just gonna use x2 and y2. Again, it does not matter. So that would mean that b equals y, 2 minus m, again, we have the value for m, times x2. 
and that's the gist of it. And then we can have our equation, so we can just do formatted output to get y equals mx plus b, substitute in the value for m for m, and then the value for b for b. So now let's talk about special cases where we could have a vertical line. So a vertical line arises when x1 is equal to x2. The issue with this is that x2 minus x1, if they're the same number, will equal zero. And as you probably know, you cannot divide by zero, so the program will crash. We need to catch that, and we can still write an equation for that. It would be x equals x2 or x1. And then a horizontal line, technically you can go through the program, but what we can also do is just check if y1 is equal to y2. And if so, that means that our equation would be y equals y2 or x1 because that format would just be y equals b. There would be no slope. So it doesn't get a whole lot more complicated than that. And again, I'll leave a link in the description if you wanna look more into the details of this concept and let's get to the program. So by now you've seen that video. In case you need some more explanation, I'm gonna link a couple of videos in the description that will go into more detail with how linear equations work. So let's get started with this code. As always, I have Adam open. I have a folder and it just has this one file, eqcalc.cr. So CR is the extension that we use with the crystal language. I am missing a terminal, so let me open that and then we'll jump back. Okay, so now I have my terminal open and let's get started with the code. So first thing we're gonna do is make a comment and explain what we're gonna do next. In crystal, a comment is just with the hash and then anything following it in that line will be ignored by the compiler. So this comment will designate what we're gonna be doing in the next few lines, which will be grab the points. So the coordinates, whatever you wanna call them, this is what we're gonna be doing here. So let's start with grabbing x1, and this won't be anything fancy. It's not like we're gonna have the user input an actual coordinate pair, and then we're gonna process it. We're just gonna prompt them like this, and then they'll put in their number, simple as that. So we're gonna say print, because recall that print does not put a new line at the end. So if we say x1, when we prompt them, they will be inputting here, rather than on the next line. If you want them to do it on the, on the next line, then either use puts or put a backslash n, but up to you. So now I'm gonna say x1 equals gets. Gets is the function that will take user input. Then not nil exclamation point. What that means is as long as this value isn't nil, so making sure the value exists basically. This is a bit foreign for, for me as well, so don't be too concerned, but it has to do with how the data types work in Crystal, and that will basically just give us a string. So now we can say chomp, and chomp means remove backslash n or backslash r from the end of the line. So if I type in five and I press enter, it goes to the next line, right? Because it sees a backslash n. So chomp will just remove that. So we say chomp, and then we say two underscore f. That means to float. So here we have a string, but once we say 2f, we convert it into a float. So a float is just a decimal, and that's it for user input. So we're gonna grab that, and let's paste it a couple of times. So then let's change it up a bit. So now we need y1, and change this to y1. Okay, so now we have all the points, and let's just check to make sure that they were inputted correctly and that we didn't mess up. So what we're gonna do is just do a little bit, bit of formatted output. So we're gonna print this out just in like coordinate pairs. This is just for debugging. And we're gonna say x1 comma y1 and then, and I'll go over what that means in one second. So if you are not aware what this means, so the hash curly brace variable name then the closing curly brace, that just means instead of printing out x1, grab the value of x1 and then put it in here as a string. So substitute the value in here. So you'll see what that'll output in one second. So let's grab our terminal and let's run this. So recall that just running crystal and then the file name will compile it and then it will run it. So you'll see some delay, but that's just compiling. It's not like crystals actually super slow because it's quite fast. So let's just give it one, two, and three, four. And you can see one comma two, three comma four. So that looks good. 
So let's comment this out and let's bring it down here just in case we need it in the future. And let's do the math. So as we went over in the video, we can get slope, which is M by just saying change in Y over change in X. So we'll say Y2 minus Y1 divided by X2 minus X1. So of course, parentheses mean do that first. So order of operations. So we will do this and that, and then we will divide the two. So we make sure that we get the proper value. Now let's get into how we actually calculate the y-intercept, which of course we went over in the video. We can just do y2 minus m times x2. And that will give us our y-intercept. And then we can print it by saying puts, and then we'll structure it like this using the same formatting syntax as we did before, m, x, plus, and then b. So let's run this. We'll give it 0, 0, 1, 1, and this should give us y equals 1x plus 0. And it does, let's test one more point, negative 5, 4, 4.5, and 3. So let me check this on a calculator and see if it's right. Okay, so this value is correct. So that means that our math is working just fine. There's a couple things, however, that we should work on. So the first thing we want to do is the error checks that I talked about during the math video. So for example, if I type in one zero and one four, it would be a vertical line. So it gives us y equals infinity x plus opposite infinity. So obviously that doesn't make any sense, but the reason is because it's dividing by zero. So it's just returning infinity. And then the other issue is if I say one, two, one, two, we get this other error because these points are the same. So in Crystal, it'll still do the math on these values, but in a language like C, for example, it would seg fault, so it would, it would crash, basically. So this gives us y equals opposite nan x plus opposite nan. Nan stands for not a number, so let's fix this. I want you to pause the video and think about how you would solve this problem. Okay, so you might have thought we can just check to see what the values are. If you thought that, you're absolutely correct. So let's write an if statement. This is how you write if statements in Crystal. So the first thing I want to do is check if the values are equal. So let us make a comment just so everything's nice and structured. And we'll just say error checking. And then here I will say if x1 equals equals x2 and y1 equals equals y2. If you're not familiar with Boolean algebra, what the equals equals means is if these two are equal, return true. And if they're not equal, return false. The two and percents mean if this is true and this is true, return true, otherwise return false. So we press enter. We don't need a colon or a curly brace or anything because Crystal looks at the indentation. So if this is true, that means that we have the same point. So I will say, please enter two different, oops, different points. And then we'll say exit. And now we can write our else if. And else if in crystal is ELSIF. And that will allow you to give it another condition. In this case, we want to say x1 equals equals x2. And that would mean that it is a vertical line. So then we can say, as I talked about in the math, x equals, and then we can just give the value x1, and that will be fine. There are a couple more things we need to check. So if y1 is equal to y2, it would give us y equals 0x plus a number, and we don't really want that, it looks off. So instead we'll say, y equals y2, or we can say y1 if we want to, you know, keep consistent with that. Doesn't matter though. And then we have all the bases covered. Since these exit, we don't have to worry about the program continuing to run with all this math. Oops, with all this math. So we're all set here. Another thing you might have noticed is if it actually succeeds, it will give us a crazy number. So let's run this again in case you forgot. And you'll see it'll give us these crazy long decimals. And the other issue with this, and I won't get too far into this, is they're not actually that precise because of how data is stored on computers. But that's a topic for another time. So what I wanted to do is just round to three places. So here's how we round in Crystal. Go down here, m equals m dot round. And then the number of places, we'll say three. And then b equals b dot round. And then the number of places, which is three. And let's run this again. 
same numbers, 1, 1, 0 0.342, 0 0.5, and you'll see it's much more pleasing to look at. Of course, if it needs to be more precise, you can change these numbers. So let's comment here as well so we don't forget. And there's one more little annoyance that I would like to correct. So think about what would happen if the y-intercept value was negative, and then let's see if you're correct. And you can see it says plus negative five, which is just sloppy and it looks very weird. So let's correct that. What we can do is write another if statement. So let's write a comment output equation. And we can say if b is greater than zero, then we want this line to run. And then else if, same as we did before, b is less than zero, we want it to run something similar, but instead say minus. And now we have another problem. It will say minus negative whatever the value of b is. So we can correct that by saying times negative one. And now there's one more case if b is equal to zero. And in that case, we don't want it to print b at all because that's just useless information if it's zero. And then we're pretty much all set, except we need to say end in order to end the if statement, just as we did up here. So let's run this and let's see how it works. So let's make sure the basic function still works. Zero, zero, one, one, y equals one x, perfect. And now let's be like a difficult user and give it the same x value. And you can see x equals five, perfect. And now let's give it the same y value. And y equals two, perfect. And let's give it the same point. One, two, one, two. Please enter two different points. So it looks great. We are all done with this. And this is pretty much all there is to it in this project for Crystal. So that's it for this video. I will leave a link in the description for further reading about linear equations if you need it as well as a copy of this code, which will be linked to my GitHub if you wanna download it and check it out for yourself. But I do encourage that you write it yourself and try and work everything out on your own. As always, if you have any questions, please leave them down below. I will continue the Crystal series, so please subscribe and you'll see more of that and it should be a lot of fun. So thank you for watching and be safe.